such an early hour. Well, I am usually better after I've had my first cup of coffee. Would you like a cup? Oh, no, thanks. I've had coffee and breakfast over an hour ago. Working women do have to keep a schedule, you know. But I wanted to report to you on my talk with Alex. Then you've seen him? Yes, I've seen him. Oh, what did he say? Is it, um, well, how did he seem to you? How did he seem? Well, like another person. He's not like the Alex I knew at all. Vicky, please, what did he, what did he say about me? How does he really feel? Well, if you mean, was he telling you the truth? The answer is yes. He spent the last 25 years building an empire for you. Somehow, I never doubted that. Well, if you never doubted it, then... Oh, well, I, I asked you to talk to Alex because I... I don't know if he made his world for me or for a dream of me. Don't you see, Vicky? How can I measure up to this... this ideal Alex has spent so long creating? How could any woman... There's so much he doesn't know about me. Well, then I suggest you tell him all about yourself. You have nothing to hide. Oh, really, Iris, I can't discuss this any further. I have to be getting to work. Thank you, Vicky. I just can't tell you how very much this has meant to me. I think nothing of it. I was glad to find out. Goodbye, Iris. Goodbye. And thank you again. Carrington. Is Alex free? Uh, one moment, please. It's her. It's Iris Carrington. Iris, this is Alex. Alex, I, I want to talk to you, but, but not on the phone. May I come see you? Of course. Just tell me when you'll be free. Something just came up to cause me to cancel my whole morning schedule. Alex, are you sure? Yes, darling. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Say something wrong? You want me to uh, go out and come back in again? She's in there. Who's in there? And why are you whispering? And the way you're acting must be the Queen of England. Or? Iris Carrington. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be. And she came to see Alex. Isn't it romantic? <laughs> I'm so excited. I just typed a letter with the carbons reversed. Believe me, I doubt it. Believe a notice. He'll probably sign both sides. <laughs> This morning, I'll bet he would. You know, I'm not too observant today myself. I just noticed. <laughs> huh. I forget to shave? Ah, you mean this, huh? Yeah, I mean that gorgeous Stetson. Yeah, well, uh, Stryker Bellman gave it to me. Took me to the horse show, too. Guess he was trying to sell me on uh, staying here in Texas, right? Did he make a sale on Texas? Well, he made an interesting offer. A position in his law firm. And I may just buy. I hope you do. But uh, if you wanted to consult Alex on it, you may have to wait. <sighs> the first time in my memory, Alex Wheeler has let business go. For something far more important. Nope, that's all right. I don't mind waiting. Well, excuse me then. I better retype this letter. I'll have some tall explaining to do. Iris or no Iris. 
Right, uh, I'll wait over here. Now, now, there's the, there's the crowd pleaser of the Marshall family. She's a fine rider, a trainer, a breeder. What that girl can't do with a horse just doesn't get done. <laughs> you all seem to have all the fun. Oh, Rena, you're the one that's always on the go. And that's not where the fun is, either. I miss riding, and I miss the shows, and I miss jumping, too. <laughs> Well, nobody should have to do without all that. Here, why don't you take Lady Grey around for a few jumps? <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Some kind of a girl, huh? Yes, sir. Some kind of a girl. I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, Alex may be with Iris for uh, some time. That's okay, Terry. I don't mind waiting. When Vicky came by to tell me you felt you couldn't trust me, at first I thought I'd lost you, my darling, but now... I... Alex, please, don't make too much of this too soon. How does the poem go? Had we but world enough and time. This coyness, lady, were no crime. Please believe me, Alex, I'm not being coy. I'm just being cautious. Cautious? After all these years, how can I blame you? But you did say you were staying in Houston. I said I'm thinking about staying here. Please, don't rush me. <sighs> of course, uh, I'll try not to, but... What can I do to help you make up your mind? Nothing. I mean everything. Oh, Alex, what I think I mean is just... Just stand by me, but don't... Crowd you? Yes, yes. It's, it's not simple. I can't stay on as Rena's guest forever. I'll have to find an apartment here. An apartment? What about a house? A house? Oh, a house sounds so permanent. I don't think I'm ready for that. Not yet. Of course, perhaps. I'll, ha I'll have to give up my lovely place in Bay City. But then it seems so cold and empty now. And then there are my bank accounts and, and my holdings, and I'm terrible at that sort of thing. Let me handle it for you. I'll get in touch with the lawyer when... <sighs> What is it, Iris? Uh, uh, something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's just that my lawyer is also my ex-husband. Brian Bancroft. Yes. Perhaps I should have said my almost ex-husband. We've agreed to divorce, but the papers aren't final yet. That, that's something else that has to be finished. Would you like me to call him? I can handle all this for you. Oh, no. Thank you, Alex. I, I wouldn't do that to Brian. I owe him at least that much. Yes, well, whatever you think is right. My goodness, I've, I've taken up an awful lot of your time. I know how busy you must be with appointments and conferences. There's only one appointment I'm interested in. That's one I made 25 years ago. Really, I should go. Not before you tell me when you'll see me again. I could take the rest of the afternoon off. We could go sailing in my yacht. No, no. Then how about dinner? Tonight. I'd love to. I have to see Dennis first, after he finishes work. Oh? I have to tell him I'm thinking about staying in Houston. He may not like the idea. Why not? He'd love to have you stay. If he feels crowded, it's a, a big city and uh, uh, 
Surely he, uh, he won't object. Well, I don't know if he will or not. But what my son thinks is very important to me, Alex. If it's important to you, it's important to me. Thank you. I'll call you after I talk to Dennis. Not until he says he'd love to have you stay. You promise? Yes, I promise. <sighs> Remember, call me just as soon as you talk to Dennis. I won't get any work done until you do. I will, though. <laughs> what are you two grinning at? Who, us? Nothing, boss. Well, Ryan, I'm sure he didn't come in here to gawk at your uncle. How was the horse show? Did Stryker open your eyes? Anything new? He, uh, he sure did. Well, I, I hope it included the job offer. Well, uh, I can't wear this in tank here, can I? Now Stryker will just give me a place to hang and I'll be in business. <sighs> Great. Terry, get Stryker on the phone. Have him join us. I want you to come in here and tell me what changed your mind about staying in Texas, huh? All right. Mr. Bellman, please. I must have gotten pretty lonely up here, Alex. Yes. Sometimes I felt like I wasn't living 50 floors above other people. I was living 50 floors away from them. But not now, right? No. Now I'm just like everybody else walking around down there, living and loving. Well, it gets pretty rough down in the streets and dirty. Yeah, but I'm ready for it, Ryan. No matter how rough it gets, it's better than living in a gold-plated palace with nothing but empty rooms. Well, come on. Sit down. Tell me why you decided to stay. Well, two reasons, really. Reason number one. You're not satisfied with the investigation on the Sheik's death. I'm disgusted with it. Spent most of yesterday reviewing the case with the authorities. And? And we went over every bit of evidence they've dredged up. Now, the feds are convinced the orderly was involved, all right. The one they found floating in the ship's channel? Yeah. But that's where the whole thing ends. Somebody paid the orderly to switch pacemakers, but they don't have any leads as to who it was. Their best guess is that somebody from Tankir just flew in and flew out. But you're sure they're wrong? I'm not sure of anything in this mess. Call it a hunch, I don't know. I just, I just feel I can learn a lot more here in Houston than I could in Tank here. Well, that takes care of reason number one. What about number two? That's personal. Personal? Mm-hmm. Suddenly you're uh, all closed mouthed. Uh, what's the matter? Is she married? Well, I don't know yet. I'm sure you're going to find out. Good. <laughs> and if she isn't, you can bet I'm not going to hop on the next freighter or train out of town and leave her waiting for, what was it, 25 years? <laughs> well, you can learn a lot from your elders, even if it is from their mistakes. Alex, you sent for me? Stryker. Hmm. Ryan has decided to accept our offer. Oh. He'll be joining your firm in world oil business. That is hmm. terrific. Oh, Thanks. welcome aboard. It's great to have you. You grab that hat, and I'll take you down to the tenth floor, and I'll show you a, a desk and a secretary and um, some work. Already? Well, you knew there was a catch now, didn't you? <laughs> I'll get you the file on the Marshall Oil bankruptcy claims. That'll be your first order of business. Well, show me the way. Right. Right here. Uh, about those claims, uh, will Mike's house in River Oaks be sold as a part of the proceeding? I'm afraid so, Alex. Just about everything Mike had has to go. Make an offer on it for me, will you? The house? Yes, make it a good offer. Good enough to help the family out. Well, sure, Alex, but uh, do you need a house? You got to... What, an, an empty palace? Yes, that's what I've got. What I need is a house. A home. 
At least I hope that's what it will be. I'll do my best. Okay. Goodbye, Andy. Come on, boy. Go on. See you later, Alex. Yeah. insisted on seeing me. Now, what's so important that you have to come this time of the morning? Uh, something uh, you've been wanting for a long time, Mrs. Cook. Let's see what you've got. Uh, I went to a lot of trouble to get these. And not a little risk. Why is it that I'm feeling this funny sensation all the way down in my pocketbook? Maybe you're just picking up my thought waves. You know, I make my living by pictures. I can't just pack them on the walls and admire them. So you want a little extra? Yeah, I'd say uh, double my usual fee. That's a mite greedy, isn't it? No, no. Uh, you know, I, I think it's about, just about right for these. After all, I, uh, I put myself on the line to get these, Mrs. Cook. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I tailed Mrs. Bellman, L like you suggested. <laughs> she went straight to the Wheeler World Building, all right. And, uh, when she got to the garage, and when she got into his private elevator now, Look at this. Her own key. Oh, Mommy. You really blew it this time. And uh, here they are, together on our screen at last. You're very good, Mr. Whalen. You know, I can, I can see how you faked the first one, but... This, this shot of Vicky and Alex really looks like it's been taken inside of the world building. Now, how did you do that? Uh, Mrs. Cook, these are not fakes. Oh, come on. You're kidding, aren't you? No way. Now, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I used a skeleton key to get into Wheeler's private elevator. Now, I want to tell you, I was sweating blood when I got out on his floor. Now, I was, I, was, I was very lucky they were so lost in conversation that they didn't see me. Wheeler would have had my license in an instant if he'd caught me, not to mention what would have happened to my hide. <laughs> so, she really does have a key. That looks bad. But not bad enough. They're old friends, and she could have always said that he gave her a key out of friendship. Yeah, pretty close friends, eh? <laughs> you know, they're getting to know each other better and better. Maybe he said, uh, not tonight, baby, I've got a headache. Uh, you think that? <laughs> I think you did old Victoria in, Mr. Whalen, and you did it fair and square. Oh, well, now, you know what they say, Mrs. Cook, honesty is the best policy. Well, I think virtue should be rewarded, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'll double the amount we agreed to. It'll be in the mail tomorrow. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Cook. Victoria Bellman, please. It's her daughter speaking. Yes. Vicky, honey. Yes, Rena, what is it? Oh, nothing in particular. 
Uh, I just thought we haven't seen each other for some time, and a little birdie tells me that we have something to discuss. Uh, Rena, if this is about Stryker buying you that horse, there's no way in the world... Now, Mommy, let's not argue over the phone. You know we do that a whole lot better face-to-face. -face. Besides, there are more things to talk about in this world than horses. There's, um... Rena, what have you got up your sleeve? If you want to know that, you'll just have to take a look. All right, I'll come by your house after work. Oh, that, uh, that may get a little involved. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's meet on neutral territory. How about Top of the World Club for lunch? Should I ask Stryker to join us? No, I think we'll leave Daddy out of this for now. All right, Rena, if you think all of this is necessary, the top of the World Club at noon. Bye-bye. See you there. Rena, on my way in, I passed that unpleasant private detective you hired. He hasn't really turned up anything on your mother, has he? You'd be surprised, honey. Very surprised. It's a shocker. You're not going to use it, are you? Discreetly, Iris. I wouldn't want this getting all over town. Rena, don't do this. Please. Your mother's been so kind to me. Has she? Well, don't you worry, honey. I won't push her too hard. At least think about it. Oh, I will, all the way to lunch. Now, if you'll excuse me, if I'm going to play King of the Mountain with dear Victoria, I'll have to get dressed to kill. Rena. Rena. And now, the next part of Texas. Um, you should have enough clothes until you get settled there, okay? I want you to do me a favor. Okay. And be sure and call us and tell us all about your adventures when you get to Houston. <laughs> yeah, well, there better not be too many adventures. You'll be back on this ranch for the rest of the summer. Max, I'm going to be so busy working for Aunt Maggie that I'm not going to have any time to go looking for any trouble. Uh -huh, that's another thing. All I have to hear is that you haven't been working hard enough to pay for your keep. And I'm back on the ranch, right? That's right. I know. I know. Any other advice, big brother? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Oh. Don't go walking around at night on the streets by yourself. And don't go keeping bad company. And I don't, I don't want to hear you. don't go robbing any banks. And don't forget to brush my teeth, right? Any other don't? Just one. Don't forget we love you. <laughs> that goes double for me. Thanks. <sighs> well, I guess I better get going. Hey, where's Ricky? He's under that pile of junk he calls a car. Where else would he be? Hey, Ricky, go on out of there. Promise to drive Elena to Maggie's. Hey, I can't do it. If I don't get this front end fixed, I won't uh, be able to race. Ricky, you promise. All you ever think about is your stupid old stock car races. Come on, Elena. The Harris County stock car race is the biggest thing to hit this neck of the woods for the whole year. Oh, baloney. Ricky, you slide on out of there. Or I'm going to fix your front end. Ricky. Justin's up at the house, not doing much of anything. I'm sure he'd like to finish up here. He'd enjoy working on a stock car again, that's for sure. That way you can drive Atlanta to Houston, and you still have your car ready for the race. Wow, you really think he'd do it? Oh, sure. No, well, I don't know what I'm doing you any favors for. Well... 
I guess we're on our way. <laughs> hey, I'll speak to you from the big city, okay? I hope Ricky's in a hurry to get there because I cannot wait. You behave now, you. I will, I promise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, you are a real peacemaker, Jenny. I was about to crack heads there. You can't risk any more cracked heads. Every time Ricky goes into a race, we do that. We certainly don't need it at home. You're right. Hey, you want to go for a ride? I'll saddle up Lady Grey. Yeah. I'd like that. Lady Grey could use some exercising, and I could use a nice long run. Okay. I'm glad to see you looking so cheerful. I must admit, I was half expecting a tirade. In front of all of your business associates? No, Vicky, they won't see any hysterics today. Not for me, anyway. Then you are going to be reasonable about Stryker's decision not to buy you that horse? I want us to both be reasonable, Vicky. Now, I know that you've had Daddy change his mind about everything, so I'm going to convince you to change his mind back again. You know you'll never do that. I think I will. Alvina, please, you promised me you wouldn't get upset. And I told you that I wouldn't be the one most likely to get upset. Waiter, would you bring my mother a drink, please? Vodka martini. That's right, is it? Alvina, why don't you let me decide if I want a drink or not? Well, I was just trying to be helpful, honey. I thought you might be needing one. What's that supposed to mean? I thought it might help cushion the blow a little, that's all. Rena, what are you up to? What blow? In seeing these, honey. Here you go, ma'am. One vodka martini. Thank you. Where did you get these? I hired a private detective to follow you. It's amazing what those guys can turn up with the most respectable businesswoman. Yesterday? Mm -hmm. You weren't very cautious. I had no reason to be. You didn't? <laughs> Rena, everyone knows that Alex and I have been friends for years. And you know very well that I went to see him yesterday because Iris asked me to. Well, I sure know now that she made a mistake in asking you. I'll just bet you were thinking about Iris and this. It's not what it looks like. Oh, I think it's exactly what it looks like. If you're just friends, why do you have a key to Alex Wheeler's private elevator? And why do you go to a suite when his offices are right next door? And how do you explain this? Rena. Or I... this? He's thrown you over, hasn't he, mother dearest? for Iris, the one true love in his life. You know, I really hate to bring all of this up when Alex has just dumped you. 
Athena, please. You're not going to deny that you were lovers, are you? I didn't think so. No. But not when Stryker and I were together. But you left him for Alex Wheeler. I wanted to be fair to your father. So you lied? You, you told everyone it was because of your career? You didn't have enough time for Daddy or me? Rena, when I left Stryker, he begged me not to take you two. And I... I loved him too much. I didn't want to hurt him anymore. Oh, how can you say you loved him when you left him for Alex? I guess you'll never understand. I sure won't. I don't think you ever loved Daddy or me. I can hardly believe the grand passion you have for Alex. <clears throat> You're made of ice, lady. I don't think you've ever loved anyone. Waiter, another vodka martini, please. Sure thing. Can I get anything for you? No, thank you. I'm just fine. Well, all right. Uh, how about uh, I send the waiter over here with the menu, and you could order dinner then? Why don't you give us a few minutes? I don't think we're ready to look at the menu yet. I don't think we'll be having lunch. It seems my mother has lost her appetite. Rena, you've had your little victory. You've managed to publicly humiliate me. <laughs> and here, even I thought you wouldn't create a scene in such a public place. Ooh. And if you're satisfied... No, I'm not. Sit down. You haven't heard the terms on what it will take to keep me silent. Now, you are going to go to Stryker's office and tell him that you've changed your mind about me staying in Houston. I haven't changed my mind. Oh, yes, you will. And, in fact, you're going to tell him that it's good for his health to have someone around who really loves him, since I have proof that you don't. Rena, I honestly am not competing with you for Stryker's love, and I, I want you to go back to Bay City for your own I'll good. I'll decide what's for my own good, and it's not being alone in a little apartment in another town. I'm staying in Houston. Now, you just tell Stryker exactly what I said, or I'm going to show him these, my I'll go to your father's office right now. I thought you would see it my way. No. I'm going to tell him everything. You wouldn't. I would. You may think you always get your way, but you can't blackmail me. I'm impressed with my new office, Stryker. My entire staff and tank here didn't have that much space. Well, I'll tell you, son, we don't have a bigger account than World Oil. And I figure when you start getting your work into that office, it's going to seem pretty small pretty soon. Well, then I better get started right away. I've been looking over these Marshall Oil files. Didn't realize it was that bad. Yeah, they're in pretty bad shape. I tell you, that family's gonna have to scrape up every nickel they can get. Since Alex wants to make an offer on Mike's River Oaks house, I think that's where you ought to start. Right, now, who do I see about the house? Well, the person to talk to would be Kate Marshall. That's Mike's mother. Okay. You'll find her down on the Marshall Ranch, about uh, 30 miles out of town. And which one of Houston's innumerable freeways do I take to get there? None. You just go up to the roof of the world building and hop into Alex's helicopter. Hey, hey. Yeah, I talked with Terry and made sure that it was ready and waiting for you. Oh, and by the way, on your way down there, you can do a little sightseeing. You can see uh, downtown Houston and the, ooh, the ship channel. Now, that's something you don't want to miss. And the uh, San Jacinto Monument. Um... Incidentally, the pilot of the helicopter knows the way to the where, where Kate is. He's 
flown Alex and Terry down there for Mike's funeral. Well, I better get going. Mm. Uh, Ryan, when you're talking to Kate, don't tell her that the offer comes from Alex. Say it comes from me. Why? Well, the Marshall family is uh, old Texas. They can be as cussed and hard-headed as Sam Houston or William Barrett well, Travis well, wait, or any uh, of those old boys. What's that got to do with selling a house to Alex? Oh, a lot. You know, I was down there at the funeral and there were some hard words between Alex and Justin Marshall. What about? About Mike's death. I told you that uh, some of the Marshall people, uh, especially Justin and Dawn, blame Alex for, for driving Mike to suicide. That's crazy. I know it is, I know. I don't think Kate takes too much stock in this, but you're gonna have to get all of the Marshall signatures if you wanna sell any of Mike's property. So leave Alex out of it, right? That's right, son. I know it's an uncomfortable spot to be in. But like I told you, Justin and Dawn, if they get wind of the fact that Alex is in on this, they are going to close ranks on you. And no matter if they get a lesser offer from somewhere else, they're going to take it. OK, Striker, I'll see what I can do. I tell you, it's for their own good now. They need all the money they can get. And it makes no difference in the world where it comes from. Stryker. Oh, hello, Ryan. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't realize you were busy. Oh, no, that's all right, Vicky. Uh, I was just leaving, Stryker. You have a good trip now, son. And you, uh, say hello to Kate Marshall from Vicky and me, huh? I will. All right. Well, this is a nice surprise. You've got a light day at the office. You come by and have lunch with me. No, I came to talk to you, Stryker. Well, we can talk and eat at the same time. I'll take you up to the roof, and you can tell me all about it. Uh, but, Stryker, now, I... now, look, don't argue with a hungry man. But come I... on, come on. Marshall. Kate Marshall? That's right. My name's Ryan Connor. I'm with Stryker Bellman's law firm. Nice to meet you. I met Stryker when he was lieutenant governor. Mr. Bellman asked me to come out here to see you. Yeah. You always go everywhere and one of those? I beg your pardon? That thing. The helicopter? Huh. No, it's uh, just a lot faster than driving out here. Oh. People in Houston use those things to get around now? You mean to work, go home? Uh-huh. No, uh, <laughs> businessmen use them when they're in a hurry. Yeah. Well, you're always in a hurry, aren't you? I guess that's so. <laughs> well, I sure hope they don't start bringing people out here from the city and those things. But then I guess you didn't come out here to sell me one. What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Bellman asked me to come out here to see if you'd be interested in selling the Marshall home. He said he knew that, uh... Sell the place? Well, 
Yeah, Stryker said he knew you and your family were having uh, some financial trouble. That's right. <laughs> we had trouble in the late 30s, when the land turned to dust and the cattle died. And we had trouble in the early 30s when the bank failed. <laughs> yes, but now with Mr. Marshall gone... Uh... Yeah, and then... Young man, we've had trouble since 1836. When the Mexican army marched right through here and stole all the cattle. But this place was never for sale. And it's not for sale now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean the ranch. I, I meant the house in town. You said the Marshall home. This is it. You're standing on it. Not that house in town. That was just Michael's hotel for a few years. I'll be glad to see it gone. It's nothing but bad memories. He wasted a lot of his life in there. Then perhaps I could describe the offer Stryker's ready to make. Young man, I'm not going to worry myself at what happens to that house. You're going to have to ask Ginny. Ginny? Here she comes now. <laughs> Let's go to the stable and meet her. Are you coming, Mr. Connor? Oh, sure. Sure. I want you to meet. Better do it from here. If I let go of this starter motor, it'll drop. Oh, well, you better do it face to face, boy. Uh, it's Ryan Connor, a lawyer from Stryker's office. Sorry, Grandma, I just can't stop this right now. Mr. Connor, my grandson, Justin Marshall. Hello, Justin. Howdy. Stryker has an offer on the River Oaks house that he'd like us to consider. Justin? On Monday, everything in the house goes up for grabs. Dennis Carrington and Dawn are handling the auction. After that, I'm not the person to talk to. Oh, that's Jenny. Jenny! Yeah, yeah. Would you come in here, dear? I have somebody that I'd like you to meet. Jenny, this is Ryan Connor. Mr. Connor, Jenny Marshall. Hi. Hi. Um, you know, we haven't met, but uh, I have seen you before. And I've seen you. Yeah. Your chopper just landed. I was the one on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, even before that, uh, I saw you win your cup at the Houston Horse Show last week. Your jumping was... Uh, Real beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. Did you come out here to buy a horse? Well, uh, maybe another time. Today I came out here to buy a house. Our house? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Connor has an offer for the River Oaks house from Stryker's office. Oh, I see. Well, I'd uh, expect that that would be tied up in the bankruptcy proceedings with everything else. Well, normally oh. that would be the case, but... I can get the court to exclude the house from the general settlement if the major claimant agrees. Major claimant. That's right, and, uh, well, I think I can get an, uh, an agreement if your family's interested. You mean the major claimant would be doing us a favor? Well, in a sense, it really means that the major claimant... The major would... claimant is Alex Wheeler. What could he ever do for us but dirt?
flu bug still got you, honey? Hmm? Why do you ask? Well, if you don't eat up there, I'm going to come over and finish it for you, and that would be violating my doctor's orders, and it's going to be your fault. My fault? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Somebody's got to eat it. You know, it's a crime to leave food on a plate. I'm sorry, honey. I guess I've just lost my appetite. You haven't heard the terms on what it will take to keep me silent. Now, you are going to go to Stryker's office and tell him that you've changed your mind about me staying in Houston. I haven't changed my mind. Oh, yes, you will. And, in fact, you're going to tell him that it's good for his health to have someone around who really loves him, since I have proof that you don't. Now, you just tell Stryker exactly what I said, or I'm going to show him these, Mother. All right. I'll go to your father's office right now. I thought you would see it my way. No. I'm going to tell him everything. You wouldn't. I would. You may think you always get your way, but you can't blackmail me. Stryker, I saw Rena earlier today. I hope you two haven't been locking horns again. Honey, I realize it's important to you that we get along. Well, of course it is, because that's the way it ought to be now, isn't it? Stryker, you realize that Rena and I will always have differences. Now, look, honey, I'm not a dreamer. I know that you all are never going to see eye to eye on everything under the sun. You don't have to. But if you could just... Get on together. Maybe even enjoy each other's company a little. That's all it would take. Stryker, our differences run very deep. So, Stryker... Now, listen. It's the way I want it. I do, for me. Not the part that we've talked about a hundred times. I don't mean that. It, well, it isn't just for me. I'm going to be gone soon. Oh, now you just listen to me, Vicky. It'd be easier for you if you face up to it and plan for it. It's like when a baby's coming. You, you know when. Give or take a week or two. You wouldn't want a baby dropping in without any warning now, would you? <laughs> it's the advance warning that's the big plus. Well, coming into the world and going out of it is pretty much the same thing. Striker, honey, you've got guts. I hope so. That's where I get my nickname, you know. <laughs> I'm never scared of anything worth but uh, I'll tell you something. I am scared of one thing. I'm scared of leaving my little girl alone. I want Rena to have a mama when that time comes. Same way I want you to have a friend in Rena. That way, it'll be easier for both of you. Now listen, you're the one who said you had something to say to me, and I haven't let you get a word in edgewise. Oh, well, Stryker, that can wait until later when you get home tonight. Well, didn't you say that Sam and Bart were coming over for dinner? Oh, yes, that's right. Sam and Bart are. Well, we'll talk later. Hmm. It can wait until later. I've got to go, honey. Oh. And Marshall, this young man came all the way out here to make us an offer. Now, the least you can do is to hear him out. Grandma, any offer that comes from Alex Wheeler. Justin, I said we'll hear him out. 
You hear? I've already. Hear him out. Yes, ma'am. Listen. Now, I can understand how Alex Wheeler's name might stir up a lot of feelings in this family. But I didn't come out here today to sift through whatever happened in the past. I just want to talk about this one possibility. Just pretend the past never happened, huh? Look, I believe Alex Wheeler will exclude the house from the general settlement. He wants to minimize the damages done to the family by the bankruptcy. Now, that man drove my to father to accept... bankruptcy. Now he wants to minimize the damage. Come on, Connor. Something doesn't wash here. What do you know you're not telling us? Let us in on it, will you? How do you know that Alex Wheeler just won't keep on doing what he started to do to the Marshall family, and that's to destroy them? Hey, you're talking about some imaginary character you've concocted in your own head. Look, I know the man. Alex Wheeler happens to be my uncle. Well, I'll be. That's how you know so much about the kindly Alex Wheeler. He's Uncle Alex. Be careful now. Well, if I were you, I'd be careful about the kind of a man you work for. Did I say man? Your uncle is just an excuse for a man. And you're his dog robber, aren't you? Don't you know what that makes you? I've heard enough. Oh, well, you haven't? Just now, you're not going to talk to me like that and just walk out of here. No, Connor, no. You're the one that's going to walk. And don't ever come back. I don't ever want to see you in this place again. You hear me? Mr. Connor, I can't speak for my grandson or apologize for him, but I hope you will accept an apology from me. Uh, no, you don't have to uh, do that, Mrs. Marshall. Well, that's very nice of you to say, son, but it's a rule in my house that when a man comes calling, you make him welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few words to say to Justin right now on that subject. You, uh, tell Jenny all the details of the offer. She's the one in this family with a business head on her shoulders anyway. Oh, I appreciate that, Mrs. Marshall. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Justin's, he's having a tough time accepting Mike's death. Ryan, this offer that came from Stryker about the house in Houston. Mm -hmm. Who did it come from? Well, um, I'm, uh, I'm really not at liberty to discuss that. That's government talk, meaning uh, Stryker wants me to keep it quiet. Your uncle? When you said that you'd be willing to exclude it from the general proceedings, that's exactly what I thought. Alex Wheeler really wants the house, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And he really wants to help the family, and he emphasized that. He said to make the offer generous for that reason. Goodness knows, we have no more use for the house. And we need every dollar we can put our hands on to get this ranch running full steam ahead. Well, then it sounds like we're in business. Well, it might be a smart business decision, but I don't think Justin or Dawn would ever agree to it. Well, could I uh, at least talk you through the offer? Sure. Great. Why don't we go up to the house? There's no reason to be uncomfortable, even though we're talking business. How about a nice, tall, cool lemonade? Oh, I'd love it. I think every business meeting should start off with a tall, cool lemonade.
delicious. No, food. are you kidding? Nita, I'm in Houston. How could I think of food at a time like this? <laughs> well, I mean, thanks anyway. But... Hey, where's my room? I'm dying to see it. It's upstairs, Elena. Second door to the right. First door's mine. You're welcome to stop by any time you want. <laughs> thanks, Nita. You're going to be real sorry you ever said that. Now, why is that? Well, she'll have you wake till sunup listening to Hank Williams and Loretta Lynn records. And she'll sing your ears off. And she'll bore you to death with stories about how she's going to build herself a nice little ranch house at the top of the country in Western charts. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with having a dream. Well, you just wait and see. But I'll tell you what, if she starts to really drive you crazy, you just give me a yell and I'll drag her back to the ranch where she belongs. Oh, come on now. Don't say that. She's going to be good help and good company, too. Why, well, I bet Elena and I end up friends, having a real good time together. I can't believe you're really lonesome for good company. Oh, well, you know how it is. This is an early place. No customers after 9 o'clock. Nothing much to do after that. What about your husband? A little Joe. He works night at nights at a club downtown. That's why nights around here can get pretty lonesome. I heard you say that, uh, hon. Better not go telling another man you're lonesome at night. Might give him the wrong idea. Only the wrong kind of guy would get the wrong idea. This lady's a good enough judge of character to tell the difference. Of course I am, honey. Billy Joe, this is Ricky Decker. Maggie's cousin. Ricky, my husband, Billy Joe Ryan. Billy Joe's the one I'm replacing here, because he's got a job. Hey, you know where? And what good does it do? In 1929, I sold short. Hitting You got me done hard then Cause I can't get started With you Let's break it up for now, Jerry, I'm beat. It's okay with me, kid. You're in good shape for tonight. Thanks. Get some rest. Okay. Later. Thanks, honey. That was real fine, Miss Marshall. Thanks. I just uh, blew in from a visit with some uh, friends of yours. Yes, sir. Uh, they asked me if I'd use my influence to get them a, a good table for your show some night. And a friend of Paige Marshall, I told them. What do you want, Junior? What friends? Oh, just some uh, friends of yours. I was just having some cocktails and, you know, we were just talking about this and that. Ricky and Elena Decker. I told them uh, I'd see to it to get the best seats in the house for your act any night they want them. The Deckers? In a place like this? Oh, honey, if it doesn't smell like horses, you can 86 the Deckers. That's exactly what I told them. I mean, not those words. I just said, uh, well, I'll do my best if there's a cancellation. Of course, uh, between you and me, I'm uh, sure there ain't gonna be. Isn't gonna be. Please, is Mr. Curtis here? He's in his office. Uh, can I show you the way? No, no, thank you. I know the way. I wonder what somebody like that could want with Mr. Curtis. This ain't the first time I've seen him here, either. That's the difference between you and me, Billy Joe. You just wonder. I get to the bottom of things. Well, Colonel Hassan, always a pleasure to welcome a foreign dignitary and a man of honor. 
I'm not here to sample your wit, Curtis. We have business. I'm not surprised. My compliments are on your last uh, piece of business. As one less dedicated hospital orderly in the world. But I'm sure the medical professional managed to replace him. Your approval is quite gratifying, but uh, I'm here to discuss the tape. Seeing yourself on tape does make a lasting impression, doesn't it? And I know you want to uh, purchase a souvenir of your television debut. If the price is within my means, yes. But I cannot That's afford... That's what's so nice about my plan, Colonel. Everybody can get what he wants. Now, the hospital orderly who uh, switched the pacemakers. Now, he got more than he bargained for. But just about everybody else is going to get what he mostly wants. You'll get your tape where you and your orderly friend cooked up Sheik Zadie's send-off. And what do you want, Curtis? I want you to arrange it so that the new government in Tank here renews World Oil's shipping contracts for Tank here oil. <laughs> you expect me to do business with Alex Wheeler? World Oil was part of Sheikh Zehdi's regime. Colonel, a senior government will never have to do business with World Oil, I promise. You tell them they'll be doing business with Clipper Curtis. And as compensation for my services as intermediary, I'll take only a token fee, a modest commission on each barrel shipped. That's what I want, Colonel. <laughs> it would be in your best interest, Mr. Curtis, to accept a single reasonable cash offer. My interest? Your interest. Tell me, Curtis, uh, whatever happened to your football career? A slight accident? A smashed bone, I believe it was, huh? Yeah, well, thanks for your interest, Colonel, but uh, no thanks. You got a lot more to lose than I do. I'm just a working stiff trying to get ahead. But you, you got a big future in a new Middle Eastern government. If you get that assassination tape back. So get to work on swinging the contract for world oil, huh? My money's on you, Colonel, and I feel just awful if you let me go. So cut the conversation and do it. Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, can't a working girl even visit her boss without getting trampled? Man's in a hurry, baby. What can I tell you? These days, you've got to move fast to make a buck. To make big bucks, You've got to move like a rocket. Big bucks? Uh, sorry to barge in on a noun sugar, but uh, big bucks? Those are words that get my blood pumping and my heart thumping. Yeah? I always thought that when you grew up rolling in it, you didn't care all that much about it later on. Oh, a Good bankroll is just like good loving, honey. When you're getting it, you can never get enough. And when it's gone, you miss it more than if you ever had it in the first place. <laughs> I, uh, I see what you mean. Terry told me about your father's bankruptcy. I, uh, I was sorry to hear about it. Yeah, well, uh, now it's just me. A little lost lamb up against the big bad world. Well, I think the big bad world had better watch out. Well, thank you, sugar. You couldn't have paid me a nicer compliment. Making it on your own will be good for you. Never heard me. Maybe you could coach me a little. In the art of getting rich, that is. I think I could use a little coaching myself. In the art of getting rich, that is. Oh, I'm not so sure. I bet you're pretty good at just about everything you do. I got a few plans. Any way I can help with these plans? Yeah, well, your heart's in the right place, but uh, I think I'll keep a lid on them. I'll tell you one thing, though. I've got something Alex Wheeler's going to appreciate. Now, you supply somebody like Alex Wheeler with what he wants, and it doesn't do either one of you any harm. The deal I've got cooking now is going to supply Wheeler with what he wants, all right, in spades. And Terry Decker is your helper? She, uh, has been. 
That explains a lot. Such as? From the minute I saw you, Clipper, I felt heat. Summer in Houston, baby. Oh, don't turn nature boy on me, sugar. You know I'm not talking weather. But what I couldn't figure out until just now was why all the looking and no touching? And the answer? Little Miss Private Secretary to Alex Wheeler, alias Terry Decker. You've got a point there, baby. She's my pipeline to the big man, all right. And when that's... I make my move, I'm going to need the little lady. And that's why I've never been invited to sup with Clipper Curtis? Bullseye again. Terry's got a standing reservation every night. I couldn't help but notice. But, uh, what about after dinner? What about it? Well, that's when little Miss Decker heads for home. Like all good little girls. But you and me, baby, we stay out in the big, bad world working. Together. And after we finish working, I think we deserve a nightcap. In fact, I think we should have one tonight. After dinner. Way after. Listen, baby, there's, uh, there's one thing you got to understand. Oh, I do believe me. Little Miss Pipeline doesn't need to know a thing. For now. My favorite after dinner drink is Oh, but just one thing, boss. Please don't let me have more than one or two, because you know what they say about stingers. Girl has a few too many, and she might just end up getting stung. a generous offer when I see one, and a benefit to the bankrupt. You're really on top of this, Jenny. You're a real pro. Oh. No, just an amateur with uh, a couple of years of law school under my belt. Why'd you stop at two? Oh, you know how it is. Been in school all your life. I know, chained to your desk in a gloomy law library. I've been there. <laughs> well, it wasn't all exactly gloom and doom. I mean, uh, I probably would have hung in there anyway. But I got married and I decided... Grandma, Kate says dinner's ready and there's plenty for company. Are you the company? <laughs> right. <laughs> this is my son, Steve. Stephen, this is Mr. Connor. Hello, Mr. Connor. Hello, Stephen. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Are you the company? Well, I guess I am. Would you like to stay for dinner? I wish I could. Uh, but I got this uh, chopper pilot on loan and he's got to get back. Is that your chopper in the pasture? Well, it's not mine, but it sure did bring me here. Would you teach me how to fly it? Stephen Marshall, <laughs> you have a lot of nerve. My grandfather is a general in the Pentagon. Really? My dad was a pilot in Vietnam, but my mom thinks I'm too young to fly. What do you think, Mr. Connor? <laughs> I think that Little Star is just the right size for you. That's his pony. At least for the next couple of years. Well, maybe we can arrange a ride on the chopper for you, for you someday. I mean, uh, without Big Steve at the wheel, okay? Mm, well, for now, I think you better go wash up for dinner, okay? Okay. Bye, Mr. Connor. Nice to meet you, Steve. You See ya. <laughs> he's, a, he's a real fine boy. <laughs> well, he's full of surprises. Today it's helicopters. Last night he wanted to bring his pony into the house so they could bunk together. 
Tomorrow, well, you never know. Well, uh, I guess you were Jenny somebody else before you became Jenny Marshall. Uh, you know, at first I thought you were part of the Marshall clan. I am now. I'm what folks in these parts call an in-law. You mean you're not from these parts? No, I'm from Virginia. It's a long way from home. Virginia's a long way from home. Texas is my home now. This family, this land. After I married Barrett Marshall, my husband, I met him at, um, he was on staff at my father's office who worked at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. He wanted his son born and raised on Marshall land. And we've been here ever since. Well, uh, sure don't see how you could top this place for raising a family. Steve's a lucky boy. Yes. He is lucky, all right. And so am I. I'd like you to show to this place someday. I got a pretty good look at it when I flew in today. It's beautiful. No, that's just the tourist version. Oh, yeah? Well, what did I miss, huh? <laughs> it's not really what you missed. It's how you missed it. Ryan, there is only one way to see this place. And that's by horseback. I know. The next time you come out here, why don't you bring your riding clothes and I'll take you for a tour. Next time? Well, I mean, um, you'll probably have to come back and discuss this offer after I've approached the family, won't you? Well, sure. Hmm. Well, that is if you, uh, make any progress with Mike's kids. You call me at Strikers? Sure. Are you sure you want to stay for dinner? I'm sorry, I can't. Well, maybe another time? Sure. His helicopter? Oh, yeah. Boy, I'd love to be with him. Do you think he'll really come back and take me for a ride? Maybe. great favorite of mine. Now I have to settle for cherries without any duck. Oh, Stryker, I have been too hard on you. Maybe just a little piece wouldn't have hurt much. Well, Stryker, you may have uh, pulled Vicky's guilt strings, but you're getting no sympathy from the Walker kids. You stay with your diet. You speak for yourself, Bart. Uncle Stryker, I think you've been an absolute sweetheart. Everybody else would be complaining much more than you do. In fact, take my brother Bart's deck away, and he would be screaming from here to San Antonio. I love my duck. <laughs> Stryker, on the consultation with Kevin, did he have anything new to say about your test results? Stryker, 
I didn't know you had another checkup. Well, you know how it is. When your doctor is your wife's nephew and he suggests that you have a checkup, you have a checkup whether you need it or not. It's the only way to keep peace in the family. Did you find anything new, Bart? No, nothing. And what about this consultation with Kevin? He... Oh, Vicki, you know how these great legal minds work. You tell them it's Thursday and they've got to confirm it with a second opinion. I'm glad the cat's out of the bag. That's the way it ought to be. I wanted you to know about this now, Bart. I didn't go to Kevin for any second opinion. I'm feeling fine. And anyway, you are my doctor and I trust you completely. I went to Kevin about something entirely different. Well, we're all family, so I guess we can talk about it. I, I went to see Kevin about uh, Rena, about their marriage. They're not having trouble, I hope. Well, it got to be a little stormy there. Kevin stayed all night at the hospital, and... You know, it wasn't Rena's fault, and it wasn't Kevin's fault. Oh, I know how those things are. Nobody's really to blame. Well, in this case, there was somebody to blame. Yours truly. Oh. That's why I went to see Kevin. I just can't believe it. There is something new, isn't there? Bart? Vicki, you know how these things go. Test results are complicated. They take a while to study. Uh, look, Bart, I understand about patient confidentiality, but I have some rights here, too. After the last battery of tests, Kevin said it was just a matter of time. And he gave us sort of a schedule as to what we might expect. That has changed now. But Vicki, they don't issue a timetable with cardiac disease. Vicki. Yes? You were right to want to know. You should know. I think Kevin is a good man. He's a reasonable guy. And I, I think the hostilities are just about over. Stryker missed his calling. You know, he could take two warring generals and make them the best of friends faster than any diplomat I know. No, <laughs> no, no. I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But anyway, I got my kids together at the peace table. <laughs> so Kevin will be leaving Gulf Coast? Yes. He's got a clinic to run in Bay City. And Vicky thinks that would be the best for everybody. And it probably would be. My lady knows what's what. Not always, Stryker. Yes, you do. I'm a big boy now. There are some things I wished would be otherwise. I, I wanted to have Kevin as the director of that surgical training unit and assure that Rena would be close by. I wanted things whole again, the way I've always wanted them to be. But, well, I guess if what I want isn't the best for everybody, I'd be... Uh, be crazy to go on wanting it. Stryker. I think we can do it. Tell Rena and Kevin that we want them to stay and tell them it's from both of us. <laughs> do you mean that? Yes. You really mean that? Mm -hmm. I could tell you mean it because you wouldn't say it if you didn't mean it. Don't you think we ought to t talk, think about this little bit? It's such a complete shift of direction. I can't see any other way, Stryker. I mean, whatever good it will do Kevin and Rena, the price that it'll cost you, well, we'll make it work out. Oh. Listen, uh, I don't want to be rude to my guests, but... Would you excuse me just for a few minutes? I, uh, there, there's some things that don't happen too often in a man's life. And I just want to call up my little girl and tell her the news. Yes, Stryker, go, go and call her. Yeah. Vicki, I know why you're doing this. Bart but... is hurting enough now. I'm not going to hurt him anymore. 
Not in this. Not now. But there are other factors that Bart, can... they don't matter. Not as much. You're right, Sam. This is the way it has to be. Alone at last? Yes, ma'am. And your dinner guest? Wined, dined, and home in bed. What more could a girl want? This. After dinner drinks are for after. speaking. Mrs. Marshall, this is Rena Cook. Oh, Rena, good morning to you. Stryker wants to buy me a horse, Mrs. Marshall, and I told him I want the best. I want a Marshall horse. Well, we've got some fillies, just the right age. Well, we'd like to drive out and take a look. Would today be as good a time as any? Well, as good as any other. You and Stryker are always welcome, you know that. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Marshall. I'll look, I'll look forward to it. Come when you can, child. See you soon. Bye, Mrs. Marshall. Wasn't that Rena Cook? It was. She and Stryker are coming out today to look at some horses. Oh, good. <laughs> well, there, Justin Marshall, where do you think you're going? You haven't had your eggs. Oh, never mind, Grandma. After living in Europe for 10 years, I'm used to it. Continental breakfast. I've got some work to finish in the stable. When Rena gets here, tell her I'm there, will you? Whoopee! <laughs> you better get used to having your sweet little girl child around, Mommy Dears, because it's a whole new ball game. I think I struck you out at last. <laughs> See. Tell me then, what's so perfect? Well, for one thing, Kevin has gone to the hospital to make arrangements for accepting that new position Stryker wants to fund for him. And, yes, Daddy's on his way over. We're going out to the Marshall Ranch to, pitch, to pick me out and ride horse. Well, it sounds like your talk with Vicky forced her to change her mind. Oh, yes, indeed it did. It was so lovely. What did your private detective turn up anyway? What weapon did he give you to use? A weapon? 
It must have been something terrible. Iris, honey, you don't want to know. No, I suppose I don't. I don't even know why I asked. Hear no evil. Mm -hmm. Speak no evil. <laughs> I guess you know I don't approve. I think you're doing the wrong thing. You're going to wind up hurting yourself more than your mother. Not a chance. As a matter of fact, with that striker now, Iris, I know you don't approve, but you also don't know what my mother's been up to. And if you did, I... Listen, why don't you come out to the ranch with us? We can walk and talk and... Maybe you should know. I'm going to see Alex today. Alex? Wheeler? Well, <laughs> what other Alex do I know? I'm going to see him after I've talked to Dennis. For days I've been trying to reach Dennis, but he's been so busy I haven't had a chance to tell him that I'm planning to stay in Houston. Iris. Yes? Nothing. I, I better let Dad think. Mrs. Bellman, please. Hello. Why, Vicky? Kevin, I... Will you tell me, please, why you agreed to let Rena stay in Houston? Well, 17000 for the set, if you say so. Uh, the Tracy Ware pottery? Uh, uh, a minimum of 200 an item, 5000 for the set. Oh, we couldn't take less than 7500 for the set. No way, Mr. Zidney, we'll smash it before we sell them at the cheapest. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right, darling, go on with your work. I'll just uh, browse. Mrs. Carrington, it's nice to see you. Hello, Dawn. Um, could I get you some coffee? Yes, thank you. How would you like it? Cream. Okay. Well, that takes care of the inventory, I think. Uh, I'll have to check the catalog and get back to you on that. That's right, I'm handling billing and delivery. You just get the prices. Dawn tells me you're the best auctioneer in town. That's right, I'm the manager of Western Art. Let me spell it for you. That's an A, not an O. C-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Right. Madame, j'ai le grand plaisir de vous annoncer que les analyses sont positives. Bientôt, vous serez maman. Mes félicitations. Et la loto. Mon mari va vous entendre. Il a bonne nouvelle. Est-ce que je pourrais le téléphoner Je vous en prie. Ça, c'est une affaire privée. À bientôt. Hein? Merci bien. Le thermomètre. Monsieur Elliot Carrington. Elliot Carrington. Elliot, darling, it's Iris. No, I'm in San Tropez, and I'm lonesome, Elliot. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Could you? This weekend? Oh, that's lovely. Yes, I've missed you too. Terribly. <laughs> Did you dream, Mom? Oh, I didn't have a very restful sleep. 
What is it? What's wrong? Nothing at all. Too many nights in a strange bed. Well, that's what surprised me so much when you called me this morning. I thought you'd given up the strange bed and flown back to Bay City. What delayed your departure? Something wrong, Mom? Uh, no. Just a change of plans. I I've been wanting to talk to you about it, but you've been so terribly busy. Well, we've had a lot of work to do. Don and I have been inventorying, well, the Marshall House, and we've had to have these catalogs made and sent out. Uh, it's an auction this size. Oh, hi, Don. I was just telling Mom how much work this auction is. Funny, your life can seem so full, so crowded almost with things. But when you list it all in print, it doesn't take up much space at all, does it? Just a thin brochure anybody could read in 15 minutes. Don, I'm so sorry you had to go through this whole process. Well, I'm getting a lot of help. <laughs> but thank you, Mrs. Carrington. Darling, I'm, I'm sorry if it's inconvenient, but I, I really do need to talk to you for a few minutes. Well, sure, Mom. Uh, I think I'll fix myself some coffee. Excuse me. That was really very rude, Mom. Well, you have my undivided attention. Now, what is it? Now you're being rude, Dennis. Sorry. I, uh... I wanted you to know. I think I'll be staying in Houston permanently. Well, what do you think? Aren't you pleased? Well, what are you doing this because of me? Yes, but... Only partially. And what's the other part? Well, I told you I, I had an old friend here. Someone from the very distant past. I sure hope you're not talking about Alex Wheeler. Is he why you're staying in town? Well, why do you say his name like that? As though it were some kind of dirty word. It is. With the Marshall family. Why? They blame Alex Wheeler for Mike's death. Oh, come now. It was a suicide. He caused Mike's financial ruin. That was caused by the revolution in Tankir. You are taking the over-emotional reaction of a young girl. Well, what do you think I've been doing for the last week? I have eyes. This auction wouldn't even be necessary if Wheeler hadn't called Mike's debts into him after martial oil was nationalized. He forced Mike into bankruptcy. That is, I can't Look, believe you better it. believe it. And I don't care if he is a friend from your past. I sure don't want you getting involved with that man. You're not involved with him, are you? And why would that be so terrible? Because he wrecked Dawn's life. Her whole family's life. And I hate him. Hate Alex, you don't know. I know everything I want to know. And if you're staying in Houston, it means you're going to be getting involved with that man. Then no. I'm not pleased with the idea at all. I have to think more about this. my mother. I know she didn't mean to hurt you. I don't think she even considered what sending you away would do, how it would make you feel. But I will never put up with my mother deliberately hurting you. Never.
the key. You didn't have to rearrange your day, but since you're here, please sit down. Thanks. I'm sorry if my phone call to you seemed to blame you. I am to blame, Kevin. It's my fault that Rena gets to stay in Houston. I agreed to it. I agreed for the same reason you agreed to continue in your marriage. Oh, I see. For a striker's sake, is that what you mean? Yes. I want him to have a little peace of mind in his last days. I owe him that, Kevin. Well, Vicki, I know Stryker likes to have Rena nearby. No, but it's, still it's, be... it's more complicated than that. It's, uh, it's hard to admit this, even to you, what Rena is actually capable of. I mean, capable of. She's blackmailing me, Kevin. She's threatened to tell Stryker about Alex and what he's meant to me. She's blackmailing her own mother. She's even hired a private detective. Had me followed, photographed. <laughs> you know, when I look back on it, it's, it's surprising that I... I hadn't expected something like this from her before this. You photographed you. You said it was all over between you and Alex. Alex is, is in love with Iris. I... He is. Well? And that's the stupidity of this whole sordid mess. I went to see him about Iris. But my old habits on film, well, I, uh, I used my personal key to his private elevator. We met in his suite. And he, he kissed me before I left. And those pictures would make it very clear to Stryker. I mean, I could tell him the affair is over, but even knowing that there had been an affair, I, it would devastate him, and I, I couldn't let her do that to him. And she would have, you're right. But blackmail. I know. Made me sick, too. I even tried to, to tell Stryker about it myself, but I couldn't. Well, how could I? Especially after what Bart told me about his last checkup. Yes, that's what tipped the scale for me, too. Vicki. Allies. Hmm? Victims. <laughs> Maybe we could form a mutual defense treaty against any more demands from our darling Rena. Hmm? Whatever it takes. Huh? Thanks, Kevin. I do need your support. Oh, hello, Courtney, dear. Kevin and I were just having a little family conference. Come in, Courtney. Kevin and I have got to get back to work, but thanks so much for our talk. Thank you, Vicki. How are you? Courtney. I spoke with Dr. Sloan. Mm hmm he said you agreed to head the postdoc training program. I was so glad to hear that you finally decided to stay in Houston. I came to apply for a uh, trainee position, but... Well, of course, you have got that, but what? But you know what I really want. Courtney, you've got to I want you. It. I want you. But it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not alone, am I? So do all the other women in your life. Well, Courtney, you've got it all wrong. You don't understand what you think you saw. Vicki is having a very difficult time with Rena. Stryker is very ill. Before it was Kevin. Before it was... It was Rena who needed your help. Now it's, it's her mother who needs your help. And you respond to both of them. Courtney. Everybody's needs except mine. Look at me, Kevin. I need you. I need you, Kevin. Courtney, 
You are part of the reason I'm staying. Part of the reason I accepted this, this program, this training program. We can work together, see each other. But I'm afraid that's all it can be. I should have come by sooner, but you know what happened. Oh, yes, I do. We've been working hard, too, haven't we, Jenny? Mm, busier than ever, it seems. <laughs> How are you two managing now? Well, the work helps. But it's mighty hard getting used to the idea that Mike's home to stay. Mm, I know, honey. I understand that you two came out here to buy a horse today. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to get back in the saddle riding that show the other day. It was a real tonic for me. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You know, it's kind of sad to part with some of the horses, but we have to think of this place as a real business now. Mm -hmm. Selling stock is about the only way we're going to keep the Marshall Ranch above water. Well, I never doubted the Marshalls would find a way of keeping the ranch going. Well, we've survived the Mexicans and the Indians and the bank <laughs> oh! so far. <laughs> Rita, would you like some coffee, or you want me to show you the horses right now? Sooner the better. <laughs> but I, well, I was kind of hoping that Justin could show them to me. Well, Justin's down at the stable. He said for you to come on down there when you got here. I know where it is. Daddy, come take a look. Pass, baby. That drive out here just wore me out. But you know, if Kate will sit down with me for a little while, I'd just soon have a cup of coffee and visit. I'd like nothing better. You go on, then. Pick out whatever you like. Just don't go stunting on your first mount here. Pole. Mm. Thank you, honey. You look like you're carrying a weight, Stryker. Care to set it down? What's happened to my poker face? <laughs> yes, you're right, though. Ryan Connor told me that he came by here and was talking to you two ladies about the offer on the River Oaks house. Did he tell you that offer came from Alex Wheeler's office? You knew that, Kate? Yes. Yeah. And I'd be willing to sell. But Justin... Yeah, I don't think it'd Justin would be too likely to see it that way. Not likely at all. <laughs> I think Ginny agrees with us on that. Mm -hmm. That's why we haven't made up our mind. Well, you know, the money from that house would go a long ways toward helping out. But first, we've got to figure out some way to convince Justin and the others that it's worth it. That it's not just more humiliation. getting too comfortable sitting behind that desk. <laughs> no, I was just practicing. So, how are you liking your new job with Stryker Bellman? You make any progress getting that house for me? Well, I made an offer and it was a good one. Well over the assessed value. I discussed it mainly with Ginny Marshall. Nice girl, Ginny. Mm -hmm. What did she think? Well, she thought financially it couldn't be better. But? 
But what you were afraid of. She didn't think Mike's children would sell that house to you, even if you offered a hand and an eye with the deal. She felt that Justin and Don were especially bitter. They blame me for Mike's death. I know. Pretty much. Even though it doesn't make sense. I hope they don't all feel that way. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, Jenny and Mrs. Marshall, anyway. They seem pretty reasonable. Then you didn't say what her husband thought. Barrett? Mm-hmm. Then she didn't tell you. Tell me what? I guess she didn't want to think it. He was killed, at least presumed killed anyway. Southeast Asia, the plane went down, and the jungle swallowed up the wreck. I mean, she's a widow. Well, I couldn't tell you if he was ever legally declared dead, um, but that's a moot point. He's been listed as missing in action years now. It just about broke Mike's heart. But I'd say she was a widow, yes. Yeah. That seems to please you. I guess it shouldn't, but yes, it does. Alex, do you remember, uh, I told you I had a second reason for staying here, you know, besides investigating the Sheik's death? Well, uh, Ginny was that second reason. Uh -huh. I saw her out at the horse show that Stryker took me to, and yesterday I, I finally got to meet her out at the ranch. But I thought from the... Well, way... then, uh, you won't mind uh, pressing for a deal on the house for me, then, huh? Give you a chance to get uh, better acquainted. <laughs> I'll certainly do my best. Well, better get back to my own office. Okay, keep working on it, Ryan. I will. Yes? Iris? Of course. I've been expecting you. Oh, I'm never that busy. Why do you say that? <laughs> All right. Yes. Now. Come right over, darling. I almost postponed our meeting because, uh, but there are just more complications than I let myself believe there would be. We can handle a few complications. Anything, as long as you're here with me. No, that's what I mean. All right, tell me. My plans to move to Houston, I, I'll have to delay them. Indefinitely. I may even have to move back to Bay City for a time. There are just so many complications, Alex. What complications? What difficulties are you talking about? Oh, my, my life. What is it in your life? Maybe I can help. I can swing a lot of influence if I have to, choose to. What's keeping us apart uh, now that we found each other again? Hmm? Look, let me smooth it over for you. Let me take care of it. It's a personal matter. It's my... my divorce. The divorce, but what did Well, you... it, it, it's not final yet. Some delay. I, I don't know what exactly, but I, I'm still a married woman. But is that what you want to be? No. <sighs> Just that I, I don't think we should see each other until it's final. Can you accept that? I really should go now. No. I can't accept that. But I you told asked you. Me if I could accept what you said, I can't. I don't want you leaving me again, not because of that. But what can you do about it? I told you how I feel. Look, if there's trouble with Brian Bancroft about the divorce, we'll call him up and straighten it up. Now. No, no, Alex, don't do that. When I'm right, Iris, 
I'm right, you'll see. Terry? Get me Brian Bancroft in Bay City. Little range ponies, fast, long winded, but they haven't got much size. And they sound like sport cars. I want some heck. I want to ride high. Well, I hate to sell her, but I guess you're talking about Lady Grey. Lady Grey? That's what I want. <laughs> broke my leg last spring. I'm a trained rider. Oh, honey, uh, I ain't so bad myself. Uh, he still broke my leg. When I ride him, I keep my eyes wide open. <laughs> now, he's not a riding horse. Uh, nothing restful about him. Fine stud, but uh, he just hates people. Maybe only some people. Now, I told you that's not the horse you want. I think it is. I think that's exactly what I want. All right, say it is. You're not going to get him, because I'm not going to sell him to you. I just can't see getting a beautiful, flutter-brained woman killed. You can't talk to me like that. Lady, I can talk any damn way I want. Do you or anybody oh, else? Oh, yeah, you think so? I know so. Now, you want me to saddle up that mare or not? I ain't got all day. Out here, we work. Where's Justin? I want to see him. I want to see him right now. Well, I expect he's right where you left him. In the stable. Dayrena! You might tell Justin the name of that stallion you like so much. Just tell him you want to buy Cimarron. I'll tell him I want you fired right now. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do that. Oh, I'll just bet you wish I wouldn't. Should have thought of that before you crossed me, honey. Because I wouldn't want to see Justin die laughing. I bet she could ride you down. You mean son of a gun? Justin! Dog, where are you? Over here. What? Oh. Oh, at your service. Just can't help crawling under those nasty, dirty death traps, can you? You just love to have grease crawling down your face. Well, you look ridiculous. Good morning to you, too. I came out here for you to show me a horse. Now, why aren't you showing me a horse instead of fooling around with those silly cars? Did I do something to deserve this? No, he did. Who did? Him! That, that foreman, what, what... I don't know what his name is. foreman what? must be uh, Max Decker. 
He insulted you? He grabbed me. He hurt my arm. <laughs> Good old Max. He did that? Yes, he did. Now, I want him fired right now. Oh, honey, fire Max. You're going to have to... You're going to have to talk to Kate about that. Well, I'll just do that. I should warn you, you're never going to convince her to do that. Are you going to let him get away with it? Well, listen, all things considered, as I was saying, I'm just going to have to find out more about it first. You know, I think you could use a drink. Now, why don't you just come right in here and sit down and tell Uncle Justin all about it. Here. You're not taking me seriously. You're wrong. I'm taking you very seriously. Uh, 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 may I? Thank you. Now, tell me. I came out here looking for you, and I ran into him instead, out in the corral. And he fell on you in an animal lust. I am very angry, Justin, very angry. All right, all right, now, all right. Now, you don't stop taking me seriously. Okay, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I promise, no more jokes. What did he do to make you so angry? He said I couldn't buy the horse I wanted. He said he wouldn't sell it to me. Which horse? That that white stallion out there. The Cimarron. One they yeah, yeah. Justin, Justin, you, you'll sell him to me, won't you? Rena, they're not my horses to sell or not sell. They belong to Kate. She listens to Max and Ginny. She doesn't listen to me where horses are concerned. Never did, I'm sorry. Well, what am I going to do? If Max says no, Kate will say no. Uh, if you're in the market for a, a dangerous stallion, you're just going to have to go somewhere else to get him. No, no, I, I want, honey, I want Cimarron. I wa Cimarron. C I, I want him now. Right now. I won't wait. <laughs> what can I say? Say you'll talk to Kate about it. The, honey, this is a gift from Stryker, and it's very important to me. It's, it's kind of symbolic of my coming home again. What? Yeah. You mean you're, you're going to be staying in Houston from now on? Really? I'm going to be here for good. <laughs> what about you? You going back to Italy? No, one day I may go back as a tourist, call some old numbers, but I'm, I'm here for the duration. What about your cars? They won't be lonely. I put away my toys for good or ill. I mean, I'm I'm just tinkering around with this old tin can because Ricky asked me to. It brings back some memories. And makes me think of the good old days. You remember when you used to follow me around the stock car circuit? Like a puppy dog, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and when you won, I rewarded you with a big kiss. I don't deserve it. I'm just, uh, not a winner anymore. Justin Marshall feeling sorry for himself? I don't believe it. Oh, come on, you've been spending too much time out on the farm here, boy. you got to get back to the city for a little excitement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think I need. I've been holed up here too long, just waiting for a time to make my move. You're right. It's approaching. I don't think we're talking about the same game. You know the game, I mean. You're not still out for revenge against Alex Wheeler, I hope. Oh. Anyway, what I meant is that you need to, to relax, party, forget about what's happened for a few weeks. Even if I wanted to party, what would I party on? You're not looking at a wealthy man, Rena. The marshals are broke. Get a job. A job? Most people work for a living, honey, especially if they need money. <laughs> Why would I get a job? I have no experience doing anything. Oh, you have a lot of experience. We just have to find a way to, to make it work. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> you drive into town Monday and you come by my house. Then what? I'll take you to see Vicky about your new job. Vicky? Mm-hmm. She owes me a favor, honey. Anyway, I'd be doing her a favor by bringing you around. Yeah. 
She'll have a job for you at KVIK. Me working TV? Oh, she snap you right up. Now listen, are you going to show me any horses? I am determined to go home with my own critter, even if it's a mare. Well, you going to help me? And watch the clothes, honey. Thank you. Yes, Terry. Good. Thank you. Mr. Bancroft? This is Alex Wheeler calling from Houston. I'm president of World Oil Transport. No, we haven't met. We have a mutual... Um... I'm calling for Iris Carrington. She's here with me now. And Please, I think... let me. Brian. No, I, I'm fine. Listen, this may sound like a, a strange request, but could you come to Houston? I need to talk to you. Oh, it's much too complicated to go into on the phone. Brian, please don't question me now. Just come. Oh, could, uh, call me at Rena's and... And tell me what arrangements you've been able to make. I know. I appreciate it. All right, Brian. Goodbye. Really, Alex, you are impossible. Impossible? In love. And I won't let anything or anyone come between us. Well, you'd better start considering the idea that there may be some problems that don't have solutions. Terry. Check on Brian Bancroft's travel arrangements in Houston. Let me know when you have them. Oh, and uh, get a hold of Jack. Have him meet him at the airport. Bring him here. I want to speak to him first. 